if you try to convince us that black people somehow are more criminal, that we commit more crimes, or are better suited to be in cages, because that's what it looks like. And the fact that the, the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement is at less murder scenes than we are says a lot. Because we didn't get, we didn't give blood, sweat, and tears for the NEAR Act to be passed for you to continue, Mayor Bowser, Commander no, no. Kane, to continue to ask for more police. DC has more police per capita than any other city in the country. We have 32 independent police departments, at least 32. You will, this year, 2019, not be able to sleep, eat, have your meetings without being reminded that we know, without being reminded that we see. But I also want to, I also want to bring to the front folks in D.C. that are turning a blind eye. Man. When this happened to this young man, the first thing from everybody was to ask, well, what did he do? He must have done something because the police took him into custody. The first thing, it's always the first thing. Looking for a perfect victim, there is no perfect victim because all of the victims, for the most part, are black. But the fact is it doesn't matter. We cannot continue to get derailed by looking at the things in cases that have nothing to do with how the police react in the moment. I don't get a paycheck for telling the police what they're supposed to do. And there are not enough coffees with the cop, bike rides with MPD, cleanups with MPD, to parties. say ice cream parties to save black lives. And we have to stop legitimizing them. Stop going to them. Do not let your children participate in officer friendly. Yes, let me say that again. Do not let your children participate in officer friendly. It is propaganda. What does that mean? Every time I see young folks pulled over by the police, the first thing they're doing is talking to the police because they have been told all of their lives that it is safe to talk to the police. The police lie. 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 The police legally lie. The police legally lie. The police lie. The police lie. So don't talk to the police. So don't talk to the police. The police are not your friend. The police are not your friend. You got to know your rights. Teach your children your rights. We provide know your rights training, right? But if you don't take anything from tonight, it's that we have a responsibility once we know what MPD is doing to shut it down. We have a duty to black children, to black women, to black men, to black, to black uh, elders, to black trans women, to black queer folks, to shut this down. And you will not, you cannot allow MPD to continue to brutalize black people to say it's for public safety. When the police chief has only said that the goal of policing and more police is to make people feel safe. Under oath, when asked, is there a program? Do you have metrics? What is the result? What are the measurements? He could not answer eight times. The entire council asked him. There was no answer. The fact of the matter is police do not keep us safe. We keep us safe. The police don't keep us safe. We, we keep, keep us safe. safe. MPD don't keep us safe. We, we keep, keep us safe. safe. The police don't keep us safe. We, we keep, keep us safe. safe. So I say that to say one more time. The NEAR Act, we fought for it. If the government is
just not implementing it the way that they should. Camera's on. Anyways, forget them. <laughs> because it's the people who have to be the ones to bring that to fruition. It's us in our neighborhoods who need to decide that we are going to decide how we want to be in relationship with each other. What does justice look like to us? How do we define safety? Safety is about housing. Safety is about having healthy foods, jobs, health care access. Safety is black kids not having to leave their police houses in the morning to get policed down the street to the bus where they are policed on Metro, get off and are policed on their way to school. And in some of these schools have police in the schools and it repeats itself every day after school. So why we're here at First District, because the other thing that's important is all of these folks in these buildings have a petition going around right now. They want to add a police substation over here. Absolutely, them all. These are the things that happen consistently. And gentrification is allowed to happen because the police protect the developers, the new folks moving in, and move black folks and brown folks out of the way to PG County or to lock up in order to make everybody have a fair shot. The amount of policing that takes place um, in this city is by far per capita larger than any other city um, that exists in this country. I think it's really important to really understand that because if police equals safety, because if police equals safety, then this would be the safest city in America. And I heard last night there were two more homicides. So I would like to know why police seem to be so focused on criminalizing a 10-year-old boy, but keep letting the homicide rate in this in this city rise and rise and rise. Like, where, where are they at? How are they protecting us? They're not. I would love to also sit here and talk about the statistics of how many people are stopped and frisked in this city, but the police are refusing to share those statistics with us because they don't want us to truly understand how many of our people, how many of our children, how many of our women, how many of our like young people, they are criminalizing every day, humiliating. They don't want us to know the facts of what, what's the reality of what's happening. Because once we truly understand the trauma that they are causing yeah. in like our communities, they'll have nothing to hide behind. So we need to hold them accountable. Um, and through that, we, Stop Police Terror Project, have launched our No More Stop and Frisk campaign. You can, yep, you can follow our campaign um, on social media. Um, if you go on Twitter and you follow the hashtag No More Stop and Frisk, you can follow us there. Um, you can follow us on our website, um, SPT. Dot com where you can find updated information basically what we're doing is we want to galvanize and like you know mobilize all of the communities in DC and that's going to require all of us all of us coming together and showing you know the MPD's MPD's not listening to us they don't give a proud fuck. What Nini said. Um, at all. The Morgan Keynes of the world don't care. The Peter Newshams of the world don't care. But we have a DC City Council that talks about how much they care about us and how much they like, you know, value their constituency, and yet. Here we are. I don't even actually even know where the homicide rate is anymore at this point. Like I've lost, I've genuinely lost count this year alone. 
I'm, I'm done with it. Stop and frisk does not, is not helping. It's not creating more safety. It's really causing more trauma and damaging black communities. And we are not gonna have it anymore. So that's really all I've got to say, y'all. We really all need to be behind like holding uh, the police chief, Muriel Bowser, Commander Kane, and all the other commanders, the, all of the DC council, um, you know, Charles Allen, you know, is the chair of the judiciary and public safety. We need to be flooding his inbox yes. every single day, every day about this. Every day. Showing up in his office every single day. He needs to understand how serious this problem is. And he needs to hear that from the community. We can do this, y'all. This campaign is really going to bring us all together and really hold the police accountable, but we all have to be invested. This is not just a black person's problem. This is everybody's problem. If we're not safe, nobody is safe. Hey y'all, my name is Nena. Uh, <laughs> um, I was under a chant because we're in front of the police station. The folks mind saying like fuck 12 and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> So it's call and response. My, my, my movement wife is here. Middle finger <laughs> to the law. Middle finger to the law. Say no, no to the po -po. Say no, no to the po -po. Say fuck 12. Say fuck 12. Say fuck 12. Say fuck 12. These pigs have got to go. These pigs have got to go. Middle finger to the law. Middle finger to the law. gotta go because we know that police don't keep us safe right um folks probably already talked about this but bowser in her new budget she underfunded um birth justice <laughs> to make sure that we have healthy black babies um she didn't fund housing um for elderly folks she didn't fund housing for youth who are experiencing homelessness uh, but somehow bowser found two million dollars for the police department somehow bowser is always able to find just a little bit three, money three, more three for the million. police three million. three million i'm sorry i stand corrected three million um yeah so my name is nena i'm here with black youth project 100 also called byp 100 um where a group of black activists in dc and across the country ages 18 to 35 um, working for um, black liberation and actually looking at the ways that black women and girls, black uh, gender nonconforming and non-binary binary folks experience violence both in our homes and also in the streets because those things are combined. Um, and yeah, we really want to abolish police. Uh, we really want uh, black people, we really want black people to imagine what the safety look like beyond like punishment. What does safety look like beyond calling the police? And oftentimes we feel like that's our last result, um, but that is the, the, those are the options that the state gives us. But if you go up to Tamley Town, they got nice libraries. <laughs> they got nice paved streets. Um, they got nice grocery stores. They just opened like three targets. Um, and so it's really what are the priorities of the city and whether or not the city's prioritize working class black folks. And so we really want to shift the conversation that we actually don't need police. Right? What we need is safety. What we need is housing. What we need is jobs. What we need is health care. What we need is food. What we need is transportation. And the more the city divests and takes away money from those things, of course you're going to see crime. <laughs> of course you're going to see trauma in the homes. Of course you're going to see people getting in fights on the street. That's not brain surgeon. When people are traumatized and the city is not investing in them, then people react to their conditions. And so really want to push people to think beyond policing. Um, and like, it's not okay that police are violent, right? It's not okay that these police are violent. It's not okay that the police is violent. It's not okay. It's not okay that the police, that the police target, target, harass, harass, and sexually assault, and sexually assault black women and girls, black women and girls every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. MPD. 
has their badge has their badge and uses that badge and uses that badge to exploit us to exploit us and there's no way to reform that and there's no way to reform that they need to lose their jobs they need to lose their jobs they need to burn this shit down they need to burn this shit down and start some new shit and start some new shit that actually keeps us safe that actually keeps us safe thank y'all trauma from the Metropolitan Police Department as well as from an increase of violence in communities that are marginalized here in the district. There's a definite income segregation that is not allowing for resources to be sustained in those communities so individuals can properly heal and with the police combat and more trauma it's just not going to happen so we need to continue to call these people out. We need to continue to show up and support one another. We need to continue to be accountable not just for ourselves but for people like Charles Island who sits and chairs the public safety board. We need to be direct to these people and let them know like we can't keep doing this. We can't. We can't. We have young children who are normalizing their encounter with the police. That is not normal. That is not normal. It is not normal to automatically feel threatened when you see the dark color blue. That is not normal. The fact that black and brown children are normalizing being threatened by the same people that say they are here to protect them and keep them safe is not realistic. This is a small city which is a 14 mile radius. The budget is over a billion dollars. It's no reason why we do not have direct trauma service. The reason we do not have it is because it will acknowledge the unaccountableness of all these leaders, all these leaders, and it will expose their own conspiracies. It will expose their own conspiracies. They are not investing in black and brown people. They are not investing in black and brown children. That's why we have to continue to be our own self-sufficient community. We do not need police. A lot of what people talk about right now is transformative justice. What does it look like to have a community with no police and have support from community individuals that are trained in trauma, that are psychologists, that are doctors, that know holistic healing, that can take a person that was on mental health medication for 20 years and in one year have more of an impact than what the system has had over those 20 years. Those are the things we're working towards to see. So do we support BYB? Yes, we do. The Wire is envisioning a new city without police and with more healing, and those are the efforts that we lead right now. And that's what we're gonna to continue to do, and we encourage you all to continue to show up. Use your voice. Use your voice. Like, people up there can hear me. Use your voice. It don't matter if nobody's standing beside you. As long as you're heard, someone's okay. hearing you. Don't worry about working up, but work across. See who's standing next to you and go from there. Thank you. Okay, y'all. So we know all police are fucked up. Excuse the media. Y'all can believe that. You excuse me. Because I'm not going to censor me. Y'all can censor y'all. All police are fucked up. When I say all police are fucked up, I mean the system is fucked up. The system was not built for black people. Clearly the system was not built for black people, black people built the system. Oh, okay. Let's be clear, our ancestors built this okay. for them. So if, they, if we build it, clearly it wasn't for us. So with that being said, 
I also do work in PG County, right? And PG County police is just as fucked up as you guys. And the kids, y'all want to know the secret? PG County police and DC police and DC police don't like each other. The secret is PG County police and DC police they don't get along. No why they don't get along? Because both of them want to see who got the power and who can, who can terrorize black people the most. I don't know. Shame. I, sh actually, shame. And that's real, y'all, because PG County is doing the exact same thing as black people here, as, as, as MPD is doing. And right now, I'm working on a case with PG County. It's actually a DC resident. We had a youth at the age of 18 that was beaten by PG County police. And this court case is coming up. So I'm not gonna speak on it because guess what? I actually got his mother out here and I got life after release out here. The two people that I'm, I'm working with in PG County, and I'm gonna let them tell y'all more about the case. But I did meet with Asia Bray Boy. Hi, Asia Bray Boy. Yeah, I'm off a sabbatical <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> My demand stand. My demand stand, Aisha Bray Boy. And, I'm, and you know what the demand is, but I'm gonna let the mother tell you the demand. Because we will fight until, let me be clear with you guys, when Black Lives Matter get involved with something, we are gonna fight tooth and nail for you. And right now, I have something that's gonna tell me to move. Because you know what? I'm walking on top of the tracks unapologetically black. So these are my tracks and I walk unapologetically black. So when they tell me to move, I say, ancestors, should I move? If ancestors tell me don't move, I don't move. So this is my steps today. Because the ancestors said, her and Thomas said, these are my steps. I said, okay, her, these are our steps. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, I'm going to bring up life at the release. And then we're going to talk about Kevin's case. Because we need you guys to call out Merlin just as well, the state attorney, because the whole system is guilty as hell, and they all work together. They all work together. So I'm going to bring Kiana up and let her, let her tell y'all a little bit about Life at the Release, which is an awesome program because guess what? The police don't keep us safe. We keep, we us, keep safe. us safe. The police don't keep us safe. We keep, we us, keep us safe. Us safe. Resources, keep us safe. Resources keep us safe. Housing keep us safe. Housing keep us safe. Keep us safe. Jobs keep us safe. Jobs keep us safe. Mental health. Keep us safe. Who keep us safe? We keep us safe. Who keep us safe? We keep us safe. Who keep us safe? We keep us safe. We keep us safe. We keep us safe. Hey everybody, my name is Kiana and I'm the executive director of Life After Release. Okay. Okay, and I'm here to tell you because if you come down to Ward 9, best known as Prince George's County, a couple of couple of miles down the road, you will have the same exact issues that you have here in Washington, D.C or even worse, we have a um, Hank Skowinski, I believe his name is, our chief of police, and right now what he is doing is he is harboring terrorists and allowing them to come into our Prince George's counties, our marginalized, count, our marginalized sections of the county, and allowing his officers to come in to be racist, to beat on, and to terrorize, and to profile our young black men in our county and we're sick and we're tired of it so i know you have a cousin or somebody that lives in prince george's county and i want you to let them know the name life after release where we are doing participatory defense where we are going into the courtroom with our people who are being wrongfully charged and we are demanding we are demanding that after you beat our black kids asses that you cannot charge them with attempted murder on a police officer that's unacceptable, unacceptable. it's unacceptable we should not be standing for this we should not be allowing our brothers and sisters to be going through this alone we should be standing up and we should be coming out we are going into the courtrooms every single Saturday. We at the NAACP office. Yes. We are rallying our allies. We work with BYP 100. We work with Black Lives Matter. We are sitting and we are coming together so that we are able to have our people voices heard. Why are we not having our people voices heard? We do court watching. You know, we do whatever it is that we need over there in Prince George's County. We may be behind the eight ball a little bit because we don't have as many people out there that is active that are doing the things that they are doing out here. So if you know anybody or you have any relatives that are out there, any friends that are out there in Prince George's County, make sure they know that Life After Release is here, www.lifeafterrelease.org, and we are able to, to help you. And I'm going to have Kevin's mom come on and talk next. Yeah. <laughs>
2017. I'm not going to even go into a long dissertation. I just want to say to you guys that are standing here, this is not just a local problem. It's a national problem. We, if we do not stand up, it will continue to happen. You have, you pay for these people to do this. You're paying, you're working hard for these people to take your tax dollars and spend it however they see fit. Shame. And most likely, Shame. it's spent on over-policing your neighborhood, Shame. beating up your child, yeah. killing your child. Yeah. When is it going to stop? When is people going to stand up and say enough is enough? This is a 10-year-old boy who was put in handcuffs. When I saw that on the, on, online, all I could think about is my son being kicked in his temple. They're treating him like dogs. They're defeated puppies when they finish with him. That boy looked like he had his tail under his, just under his butt, just defeated. And to know he did nothing wrong, nothing wrong, what is enough enough? They won't let it happen to their ass. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Let a black officer kill, do that to a white boy. Okay. And watch what happens. Okay. You're going to have a whole lot come down on all of us. We going All I'm asking is we got to step up and for these chief of police. Guess what? Buck 12. For the chief, guess what? Whatever your officers are doing, you're allowing it. Huh. You're allowing it. The that shit come down on you. You got to go. If you can't keep right. your, your department in line, they got to go and go too. Yes. We pay it for y'all to do this to us. Y'all be insubordinate. We want justice. Right now. Right now. Aisha Boy, you got a phone number. Aisha Boy, Aisha Boy is our um, uh, our sister. Thanks, number. No, I don't have her. Okay, so what I need y'all guys to do, because we all got Google. Yeah. So I want you guys to and Twitter. All right? Oh, hey, y'all got social media right now. Yeah. Please, 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 please. I need y'all to act. Aisha Boy, because I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't care, because she know I sat there. You guys saw it on W, you all saw it on the news. Yeah. Kevin was charged with attempted murder on a police officer. They tried to make him plea out to disorderly, to disorderly conduct. So if you talk about attempted murder on a police officer and you say, hey, look, just don't do nothing. We're going to let you do disorderly conduct. You get no jail time, but just don't sue the policeman for whooping your, for whooping my, whooping your ass. They don't have a case. No. So Black Lives Matter stepped in because public defenders ain't shit and they work for the police. No. The public defenders ain't shit and they work for the system. It's all in cahoots. They want you to plead because the prison industry is a business. No. The prison industry is a business. So watch your public defenders. Now I'm not gonna say, it might, it's something that they gotta take a job and they really wanna fight for you. But the public defenders, Defenders don't keep us safe people because they'll make you plea out. Yeah, and we right. gotta stop playing because those pleas go with you for the rest that's of your life. Right. It's easy when you say, I don't, okay, we're not gonna get no jail time. But when you got that felony and can't get a housing and a job because you gotta check that box, yeah, it's a right. problem. That's right. So I want you guys to tweet Aisha Brave Boy and demand that all charges be dropped. Hashtag Brave Justice. Yes. Justice. Brave justice. Hashtag brave justice. Brave justice. That all charges be dropped on Kevin Sneed. His last name is S N E E D. Drop all charges because we go ahead and go to court on this. And we know they don't have a case. I know they don't have a case because I've been privileged to be able to see the information. They don't have a case. And all charges need to be dropped. And these cops need to be held accountable. He was pulled over for a tail light. A policeman should not be in your car because your tail light not out. A policeman should not be in your car because the tail light is out. But because there was four black men in that car, they were profiled. But guess what, Aisha? It was no drugs or weapons found in that car with four black men. 
It was no weapons or drugs found, unfortunately for you guys, because you thought you had a case and more black people committing crimes. Shame, shame. So please guys, at Aisha Brayboy, call the state attorney office and have them drop all charges against Kevin Sneed. We know he, we know he innocent. Anytime they go from attempted, for attempted murder on a police officer to disorderly conduct, clearly they don't have a case. Clearly they don't have a case. When black youth are under attack, what do we do? When black youth are under attack, what do we do? Stand up fight back. When black youth are under attack, what do we do? Stand up fight back. When black youth are under attack, what do we do? Stand up fight back. Black futures keep our people out of jail. The whole damn system is guilty as hell. Bill, black futures keep our people out of jail. The whole damn system is guilty as hell. Black futures keep our people out of jail. The whole damn system is guilty as hell. Um, I was a little off a beat. I can dance, you know, I can. <laughs> uh, um, so what, one of the campaigns that BYP 100 is working on is to decriminalize sex work um, because that is one of the primary ways that black women and girls enter the incarceration, the prison industrial complex. I know it's a touchy subject for folks out here, but a lot of our grandmothers, a lot of our mothers, a lot of our sisters been in the streets surviving for decades. Um, for centuries, honestly. Um, and so that is one of the ways that MPD uh, targets and harasses black women who are experiencing homelessness or black trans women or black queer women who are on the street trying to survive because Bowser um, and this administration does not provide housing to folks. And so um, if you want to learn more about our campaign, you can go to decrimnow.org. Um, we're also um, launching a campaign called She Safe, We Safe. As we see out here, most of the folks out here are black women. <laughs> Um, and we're talking a lot about black men, but black women also experience violence in our homes and in our streets. And so it's important for us to highlight the stories that impact us, whether that's in the hospital room when we're pregnant, whether that's in uh, the welfare office and we're getting slammed down, whether that's in an intimate place when we're, you know, we're getting evicted by the police, we also experience police violence. And so next Thursday at um, Emergence Community Arts Center um, from 6.30 to 8.30, um, the address is 733 Euclid Street, North Northwest. Um, we're having a conversation about how gender violence impacts black women, both on the state level and also on the inter-community level. So I hope everyone can come out. We're gonna be imagining like what our alternatives are. What does it look like to like keep us safe, right? We always fight it for other people, but what does it look like to center our lives and our experiences and actually keep us safe? So thank you again. <laughs> So now y'all know what we're out here for, right? We out here, basically, it's the police don't keep us safe. Right. We, we out here for the youth, we out here for the children, we out here for the sex workers that's been actually raped by the police officers. Let's be clear. We have actually policemen who rape transgender women. Shame. 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 They don't lock them up, they take them to the, the back and they rape them. Shame, Shame. And, and it's real, it's real. But what we want to do, because I actually met Commander K. Hey, Commander K. It's me, Nindy, with Black Lives Matter. <laughs> when I met her, I met her because of the other little kids that got stopped and frisked over there by Fugio Hardware, right? And she, and she, she told me that they were going to do better without you. She literally told me that because she got a child and she understood my pain. She understood me because I got a child. She told me she understood. I said, how would you feel if your child was stayed up, was, was put up against the wall and stopped and frisked because somebody said allegedly you did something? They're children, they unarmed. It got to be a better way. Like Carl Bazin, he said the police, he said this was, they, they fought a protocol. Even though this little 10 year old was safe, didn't have nothing to do with this, he said they followed a protocol. This protocol, shame. Yeah, shame. Shame. Shame, shame of this protocol. So, hey, Chief Newsom, Murray Bowser, first, this is y'all out of control. So, Commander Kane, I got some demands for you. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
And if you, these demands not met, you guys going to see us everywhere you are yeah. because we are everywhere. So wherever you are, we going to be until our demands are met. We got to hold y'all accountable. We need you guys to hold the city accountable. That's right. Because silence is consent. When we silent, right. it's consent to their bullshit. Yeah, that's right. We got to stop being silent. Demands. I want y'all to repeat after me. Police Terror actually has a campaign. Visit their website, sptdc.com. It's on the paper. To ban stop and frisk. Stop and frisk is a black person's, is a black way to lock black people, is a, is a way to lock black people up. So we actually got a demand. Be they, repeat after me. An immediate end to stop and frisk. An immediate end to stop and frisk. Including an end to stopping people from matching generic descriptions. Including an end to stopping people from matching generic descriptions. An end to the day, the two, to detain the children. An end to detain children. An end to invasive searches. An end to invasive searches. We demand. We demand that the DC Council, that the DC Council, and the mayor, and the mayor, divest from MPD's dangerous practice. Divest from MPD's dangerous practice. And instead, and instead, implementation of the NIR. Implementation of the NIR. We demand. We demand that DC Council, that the DC Council, and the mayor, and the mayor. I need to say this one more time. The best from MPD. The best from MPD. Dangerous practices. Dangerous practices. And instead, and instead, implementation of the NIR. Implementation of the NIR Act. We demand. We, we demand that the DC Council. That the DC Council. And the mayor. And the mayor. Reject a tough on crime approach. Reject a tough on crime approach. To violence only exposes. To violence only exposes. And increases mass incarceration. Let's repeat that for them again. We demand, we demand that the DC Council, that the DC Council and the mayor, and the mayor reject the tough on crime approach. Reject the tough on crime approach. To violence that only exposes. To violence that only exposes. Already traumatized communities. Already traumatized communities. To more trauma. To more trauma. And increases in mass incarceration. And increases in mass incarceration. We demand. We demand that our government. That our government not hire any more police officers. Not hire any more police officers. We demand. We demand that our government. That our government do not hire any more police officers. Do not hire any more police officers. Stop pouring endless amounts. Stop pouring endless amounts. Stop pouring endless amounts of money. Of money into the MPD. Into the MPD. And instead, and instead, distribute resources. Distribute resources to public services. To public services that truly improve. That truly improve public safety. Public safety. Let's repeat that one. That's a good one, y'all. We demand. We demand that our government. That our government stop hiring more police officers. Stop hiring more police officers. Stop pouring endless amounts. Stop pouring endless amounts of taxpayer money. Of taxpayer money into MPD. Into MPD. And instead, and instead distribute resources. Distribute resources. Public services. Public services that truly. That truly My name is Benjamin Douglas. I'm with uh, Jewish Voice for Peace DC Metro and Occupation Free DC. <laughs> Occupation Free DC is a campaign endorsed by 17 organizations to stop the Metropolitan Police Department from participating in trainings with the Israeli police, military, and intelligence. Everywhere we go, we try and get people to sign a petition calling on MPD to stop doing this, they don't tend to listen, calling on the civilian leadership to 
force MPD to stop participating in this. And they're concerned. That's the word they always use, never outraged or enraged. One exception, Council Member Grosso has said stop it, but no one else on the council, certainly not the mayor, have said stop this. We go around DC, we ask people to sign this petition saying, what I consider the most minimal demand possible. What I consider the most minimal demand possible, that's stop this police force from participating in training with a literal occupying army. An army that terrorizes Palestinians, that literally follows a legal regime of segregation. It's not just inequality, it's legal inequality. The kind that used to be present in DC and a lot of people are very nostalgic for, it seems. And somehow, somehow, they are managing to participate in this without letting the public know, without letting civilian leadership hold them accountable at all, without even disclosing the information about what they're doing. April and some others noted earlier, police have this peculiar feature where part of their profession is lying. Every salesperson will bend the truth, distort the truth, but there are laws saying you can't lie. You can't sell someone one product and then, and then give them another. Police, that's different. They can go in and say, all your friends confessed, knowing damn well that that is a complete lie, and they're trained to do that. Police lie. Police lie. Police lie. Police lie. Police lie. Police lie. But as we know well, just because someone does something professionally doesn't mean that they're going to be good at it. So when we've confronted police leadership about these trainings, Peter Newsham said, training with the Israeli military and police was the best training I've had in my entire career of law enforcement. First District Commander Morgan Kane, who also participated in the training two years ago, said, well, I wouldn't really call it training. Uh, I, there were a few materials, I guess. I threw them away before I left. I don't really remember exactly what I learned. Someone, perhaps both of these people, are not telling us the truth about it, and they don't want to disclose it. They're introducing new uh, terms of FOIA where they're making people pay for the information, even if they're nonprofits just to conceal the information from us. But I hope that y'all get involved. It's occupationfreedc.org. Again, this is a minimal, minimal demand that even the most tame liberal in this city should have no problem endorsing. But we, as a campaign, don't view it as the end goal. We view it as part of a process of disinvesting from this one tactic of trying to supposedly keep people safe and shifting toward a resource-based approach from a system where there's no democratic accountability, shifting toward a system where the people of DC, and that is still mostly people of color despite the best efforts of the leadership of this city, where the people of this city decide. So that's our goal. This is a step. I hope you will join us. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I'm Michaela. I organize with Surge showing up for racial justice, and we have like gotten so much wisdom, so much brilliance, so much like powerful beautiful anger out here i'm so grateful for that tonight and i just want to reiterate that thing of like white people have been told forever that police keep us safe but we've heard over and over tonight police do not keep us safe we keep us safe and so if you're interested in building and growing and learning with us ways that we can keep ourselves and our community members safe that don't rely on people with guns that don't rely on people who are going to traumatize our neighbors and the kids that we get to like grow and grow up with as adults who are also kind of kid-like, then like, come on out. We got the work to do. Thanks, y'all. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and protect one another. We must love and protect one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our
So what does your sign say? We have... Uh, we demand humans' rights. Publish a list of these people. We need just... Yeah, we don't... We don't do to do Okay, I don't, I don't yeah. want to go around saying anything with you guys. Yeah, we don't do yeah, that. Yeah, right now we're...